I'm in constant touch with my inner child. Taziana, thank you so much for coming here today. I mean, I, you said we've met once before, which we did, but I have about, my memory is about as long as a hair on a mosquito's butt. Oh, that's good, because you know what? Uh, this helps you to keep your mind free from uh, all the old things, and you can let new things every day. I, I'm a bit like that, but I don't forget people. I, because people, how do you say, uh, people always can leave you an impression, and it's important, even if you forget their names, right. and this is... Quite no, but I remember happening quite often to me. But, but, but I remember people you. you don't forget. People. I do remember. Once you, once some you that makes an impression. Me, right. No, but you did because you were with someone that night when we were there. You were with someone else, and I remember we were talking. You were with another lady. Well, I, I, you I forgot. was See, moving you like forgot. no, See, I was moving like a butterfly. I mean, is that right everywhere? In this, uh, in this uh, event, the what moment. do you do? It's nice to pick up people and st start talking and uh, exchange as much as you can. Otherwise, you know, you wasted a night whole evening. We've been so in so many networking events, Lance. Let's let's think about That's in all true. our, you know, professional lives. So now I, I try to to pick up the events that I like that are meaningful. Like that was for a non-profit organization and uh, events that are meaningful and then I pick up there also the people that kind of more uh, funny or in entertaining or interesting or, or deep uh, you can have a uh, even a deep conversation in in the noise in the uh, because you connect with each other so this is what I do now before I was obliged to bring a package of my meshi and uh, and burn it now. My mesh is on on my phone, of course, since already three four years, and uh, I've I try to really to be as much as more fluid as a as a person that even does business, and I try to do the way the business uh, is done among people. So, so with the friends, with with a bit of love. How often do you go out? Mm? How, How often? often? Uh, Once a week, very about often, very often. <laughs> no, so let's say one often. week. What's what's your week like? Oh my God, <laughs> it's a bit too complicated. Now, look, n n since I, I left my corporate world and uh, even my office daily work, this happened with the COVID, you know? Uh, the COVID era helped us to mm, regain some, uh, some connection with the, with the things in the house, you know? I had a house full of plants and but unfortunately I, I wouldn't spend so much time with them because I was out I had a, an adorable cat that she followed me uh, from all through the way from Italy to Japan she's 20 years old and even with her I mean I, I did the basic kind of feeding but petting a bit then coming back in the night and then and this was my my life before, really, and non-stop from morning to uh, night, because I also had to manage some different things a a aside of my marketing director work uh, with Fiat. I needed to also to manage, for example, the Fiat Cafe. Have you ever been in the Fiat, Fiat Cafe in yes, Aoyama? I have, I have most. I have. Yeah, and That's uh, really it was nice. it was created by by me, but it was like a hobby because you know my. <laughs> whole job was these 12 hours every day. Okay. Then, night, events, Saturday, Sunday, I was moving the cafe uh, business. But wasn't that, that was one of the first cafes, right? For it was the first automotive cafe That's what I think so, in, yes. Because uh, I went there on my mother. The, the, the sidewalk is very wide, so it's very easy to park your bike there. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. But it's not, it's not really a, f a, a place where people pass by so much. But, uh, well, yeah, but the location is very good. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very but good. We sit there all hot, day. It became a hot spot for women because I opened this cafe to uh, bring the car in the place in which uh, women loves to go, love to go. And so a nice cafe with an Italian restaurant on the top, beautiful color, small, petite, like our Fiat Cinquecento. And uh, the encounter with the brand, with the, with the car is uh, so natural and, you know, the sales of Fiat went from a 15% of men only to 60% of uh, women in 2022. So my strategy was really to, to bring uh, this product to the main uh, target and the main consumer that are women in Japan. Is that when Italy you know, knighted you because of that? 
Mm -hmm. They gave you, they knighted you because of that, uh, didn't they? Yes, it was in 2010, so I was because halfway, of that effort. halfway on my job. But <laughs> because uh, not only in terms of sales, of course, but in terms of connecting the, uh, the lifestyle of an Italian brand to uh, local communities, to local culture, and also to to brand Italy in a in a in a very uh, special way. So this is what I did. And when was the, what was the award they gave you? The, the award is a knight of, a uh, knight of merit. Yes, of merit. Yeah, that's not very easily given out. Uh, it's not given out to women, especially. You're not the first woman, are you? No, no, no. Well, uh, not. Thank <laughs> God. But I'm one of the few. One so of the few yeah. that have gotten it. Yeah. So and what year was that? That was twenty what? 2010. Yeah, it was 2010, 2010 but 20 I, I got in 2011 because after the earthquake. How yeah. did you feel when that happened, when you, when you were awarded oh, Look, that? it was so... Because you didn't it expect it, 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 did you? It, no, of course nobody always expected. But I, it was, I was happy and I was honored, of course. But also I, was, um, I had this uh, f very, very happy feeling inside me that the things I was, I was doing, the things I was doing to brand my cars were not usual, were very much out of the box. And, uh, you know, to have a recognition for that, it's from an Italian government and from in an automotive sector that is very male-oriented business. I, it was nice for not only for me but for the women like me, right. and for the creativity, for you know, for the a new type of marketing. So I was happy for for all what it was meaning. What was the mind process you went through in order to do that? You knew how men had already tried to advertise or promote the car. Look, what I've did you think that was different? I did marketing. Because you were so Nissan many first? Many yes, yes, of course. so many years, 33 years of right. automotive. And I, I, I worked uh, in Italy and I was at the, uh, the 90s, you know, it was really still, the, 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 the business was super male-oriented. I mean, women were in a bit of higher position, only in the HR, PR, that's it. But, but still and the back uh, of the house. Yeah, and, uh, and, and but working hard. And I could see like uh, women really were moving the company while men were fighting about their egos, you know, long meetings. When I moved to Japan, because when I moved to Japan, I was the boss, I was the marketing director. So I was literally, I could, I could make an imprinting and finally change things. So but my meetings they, were very that? short. But did they accept I, that? Because I was, I was a boss from my point of view. And the other, my, my boss was only one. And thanks God, it was a Swedish guy. Okay. More open-minded. And we were the only, I mean, me, uh, him, and the CFO, we were the only three foreigners in an old Japanese uh, How many company. people were under you directly? As a director mm. at the time, like at the beginning, like 25, uh, 30. And you had no and resistance at the beginning at all, you being a of woman. Of course I've been. I well, that's what I'm asking. You're yeah. making it sound like it was just a breeze because you were the top. <laughs> what kind of resistance did you receive when you went there? Because I'm sure it was a mind trip. Even though you graduated, you got your ma you got your master's here, right? Yeah, a Kyudai, Kyushu, Kyushu University. Kyushu University. Kyushu University. So you had the language under your belt. Yeah. You are also proficient in Kindle, so if they got physical with you, you could, hand, you could <laughs> take them out. I'm sure you kept your stick inside your office. <laughs> well. But what kind of resistance, that would you'd go home and you'd go, ah! What kind of resistance did you get? Okay, look. Um, first of all, uh, it's not about uh, language, but as you said, is being connected to the culture. And I've been very strongly connected to the Japanese culture, so I, I knew how to speak to people apart from my level of Japanese you know but to connect with people so this helped me a lot because uh, I was moved by love for this culture for this country so when you moved by love and not by a by your ego because you want to prove something you know people respond to you in a very positive way you know and you have to convince your core team, your core members, and then, then we'll spread uh, the voice towards the other. For example, I, s since the beginning, I, I, <laughs> I started calling my marketing Loveting. Loving team. Yes, That's right. You wrote that down right. Loving yeah. team. And, uh, and why? Because, you know, we, we have so much love in our private lives. Uh, you know, we are blessed with love and with many things. But when we enter in a corporation, we, we need to leave it 
aside and become uh, you know competitive consider that everybody's your enemy I don't know why is this process happening but I saw it happening with so many people and then we need when you try to connect with people on a nice human you know relationship where you discover that they are fantastic that they are not the us or that like they show up in the in during the meetings or and, and then you understand that you have to do the step first you have to bring your love inside your office uh, towards your people and then they will respond so I, I don't want to say that I'm a super uh, hippie type of peace for peace and a new age woman and I'm not I'm a fighter and you need to be as strict you know to be I'm strict. a fighter right I'm a fighter but I'm not a soldier so uh, this is a big difference you know I don't do what you know the authority tell me to do because they believe that is right but I don't believe that is right and I can go out and execute orders I'm not like that a fighter is a person that uh, try to follow his own or her own inspiration and belief. And uh, usually, uh, since we are human beings, being a fighter means to really to follow your beliefs and you know to see what is your true and and fight for it. And I think that this is uh, my energy. So I'm not a peaceful person when it comes to defend uh, my the things that I, I truly believe are important in my life. So I was very clear in setting up the the object the objectives, the vision, what we have to do. And this is uh, an important uh, process when you mm. want to motivate a team. But the second one is to make them feel that we are building something together. That's the point I wanted to get to because everyone thinks they go to a movie, they go into a movie, it's one hour. And in that hour, the person's from a bum to successful. But that's not life. Yeah. So how do you get these people who all have different dreams, different attitudes, different beliefs of how it should run, particularly here, to go along with your love team? Yes, making thing. something good that can resonate with them. Such as? You know, what one thing that I, I did, and I started pretty early on, was to, to support local communities. You know, uh, local communities uh, sometimes uh, have their um, beautiful project and nobody really cares. And most of these projects, by chance, are lead, uh, led by women, fantastic women. And they organize, uh, they could be non-profit organization, they are association. They are trying to do something good in many, many fields. So what I, I try to do, I try to pair uh, my, the DNA of each of my brands. You know, I managed Fiat, Alfa Romeo, Abarth, Jeep, so many different brands. Sure. Uh, but all Italian. Yeah, no, Jeep is American. Jeep is, that's the only thing that's American. Everything but now, now we have also the French brands all together. So we oh, became really? Stellantis, yes, yes. Stellantis, Even okay. Peugeot and Citroën, okay. it is a big family. <laughs> what I wanted to say, the DNA of each brand, uh, I, I try to connect with a good cause. You know, when people, you know, do something for a good cause, that's nothing better than putting everybody together. You can have your own beliefs, everybody can, can see the world differently, but if there is a good cause there, for example, uh, the protection of the environment, planting a tree, every wrangler, every jeep wrangler you sell, or uh, helping uh, people after the earthquake for 10 years we helped with Fiat, with Peace Win Japan, collaborating with many associations that were you know, trying to, to create a new vibe after all what happened in Tohoku. We created some cafe, uh, we, we did also so many crowdfunding projects uh, uh, to help the population there. But not only, um, I mentioned that I wanted to attract and engage women. And one of the way was to really also um, support organizations that are doing empowerment for women, like uh, also organizations focused on education. Uh, we supported Room to Read actively, Asian University for Women, that are beautiful, uh, beautiful um, associations that really want to give a new life to women education, pushing that to change the world, because this is uh, the 
the objective that at the end all of us uh, right. we need to have. And also, for example, animal protection. Because many of our uh, customers, they love pets, they have animals. Then let's, let's bring also this cause together. And these causes uh, were um, advertising, advertising our marketing platform of each brand, uh, were called Share with Fiat, or were called Be Yourself in the case of Alfa Romeo. You know, um, I was able to create for more than 10 years Alfa Romeo as the first automotive brand that supported LGBTQ actively. That was we the were first one. Yeah, here, and in, I must say, probably around the world because it was you, I started made you that? Made you uh, because Alfa that? Romeo has a strong identity, it's a yes. very me brand, myself. So a brand like this should protect every other identities and should be the one the strength of, of being yourself and have a strong identity is to allow everybody to be yourself, you know? Is it still doing that? Does it still uh, promote that? Uh, or I that, that campaign is so. I don't think so because okay. now the, the company changed a bit. Uh, no, the platform, the communication platform changed. And, but it was such a, a big thing because imagine, in, uh, especially in a, in a LGBTQ community and awareness in Japan was very, very low. In 2010 we started, uh, not uh, yesterday. I must say that someone in Italy even, they didn't know what LGBTQ was meaning. Yes, I that's tell you true, the that's truth. True, that was true, the time. Yes. So transparent announcing to everybody that I was doing this with a, a very macho brand because Alfa Romeo in Europe is, is known to be a very room, room, room brand you know, in the past. But the, the brand, the beauty of the brand is the, you know, is the design, the, the, the passion, the red, and all these uh, elements of identity were perfect to talk about inclusivity. And not only, we also helped people with uh, different abilities. We supported a fantastic uh, non-profit uh, of Shibuya uh, that really uh, helped to eliminate barriers in the city through the design. And, uh, and also Blind Soccer Association, because soccer is a, such an Italian thing, but there is a very strong team of blind, uh, of non, yeah, blind people that play soccer here in Japan, you didn't know? And uh, we've been supporting also these fabulous people. And imagine the, the energy that you bring inside the company, uh, in your dealership. Because it's not just about the audience, you know. Uh, you, we were asking me how you made people uh, work for this and work for you and, uh, and, and follow this loving idea because it makes you feel good. Tiziana, I have to go into this thing because I like to, I want to know you a little bit more. Sure. Where were you born, first of all? I was born in a small city called Potenza. And how long did you live in Potenza? You know, to Potenza is one of those places. It's a lovely town in the, in the heart of the south. And strangely enough, it's the coldest city in the south. And you imagine, I love sun, I love... Heat, and yes. I was born in a very cold, cold little city. But anyway, my sister also is a... Is a, is a, a very, very, how do you say, international woman. She's older than you? Uh, no, and I have also two brothers, but the brothers, they prefer to stay in the, okay. in the city, in the comfort of their... The, where you grew up? The same area where you yeah, grew up? Yeah, still there. Potenza. They are still there, Potenza. Wait, so you're the, are you the elder, the oldest? No, I'm the second one. My sister, sister than you? She, she lives in, uh, in Italy, but uh, she, she, she's a singer, so okay. uh, she goes everywhere to also to sing. Are all four of you close? Yeah, we are close. We are, but of course, with the brothers, is a bit more. Uh, there is more distance, also because physical they're, they're distance. Have, and also they have. But wives. with my sister, we are really, really super close. And you still close. keep communication of all the time. Of course, we love each other. Have so they all we been call here? each other almost every day. Have they been here? That's how my two sisters are. They said every yeah. day they text something positive yeah, to yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. Every day. Yeah. We do that. It's, this is the sisterhood. How and many years actually, how many years you know, we you do also sister? with girlfriends. That's true. How many years between you and your sister? Um, three years. So you are three, very three close. So you've yeah, always yeah. known each other. Yeah. So tell me this. When you got up, yeah. all of, do all of your siblings have children? Uh, yeah, except uh, the last one, yeah. Okay. So mom and dad stayed together the whole time? Are they still okay, yeah. your mother and father? No, they passed. Oh, passed, they did pass? Yeah. But did they stay together yeah, the whole time? Yeah, yeah, We had that very 
typically Italian Southern family, which my mom left uh, his work when she had four children, you know. And my father was working, and we had every day lunch together because that was the, the way we did. That's right. Father was going to work, then coming back for lunch. We were having lunch all together. And then he was going back to work. We were go going to what study. Kind of work did he this, do? This, what uh, did he do? He was uh, he was working for social security. Uh, okay. Public. It was a so public, public officer. Worker. So yeah. people knew him. Everyone knew him basically yeah. in the village. Well, we even knew each other. Imagine the the scandal when I was printed on the paper, on the local paper, as a feminist during a demonstration. I was 14, and I 14? was... 14? Wait, 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 <laughs> When my father colleagues said, look, your daughter, and my father said, he was, uh, at the beginning, he was a bit upset because, you know, we were saying, my, the uterus is mine, don't touch it, you know? And that was the, the way, but this, this is so precious, you know. I am a totally 100% uh, a feminist, and I think that every woman should be, because we have to honor all these women in the past that did so much to liberate us. Tiziana, explain one thing to me. <laughs> what do you mean when you say you're a feminist? What does that mean to you? Feminist, that I own my body. I own how you talk about women. I own the regulation that are done in my name. You have to do the things that I want. Okay. And this is very simple. Okay. This is to be feminist, which means equality, which means the same pay, which is no gender <laughs> gap in anything. Right. Okay. It's very simple. Mm. For, for five things that I believe since I was actually literally and you were 14. 14 years old. So that's, you'd say, in 1970s. Yeah, end of the 70s, because you know, in uh, those 70s were very important years, and I think that Europe and Italy was much more progressive than now in the 80s. But also, they were behind the U.S. because the U.S. has started in the 60s. Yeah, right. Yeah, and behind maybe and so the you UK. Got it, so that's when you started wearing bell bottoms in the 70s. Exactly, <laughs> so exactly. But we were doing that in the 60s, so you're a yes. little bit behind. But how is because people? Of information. But how how did we go back backwards so much, America? So much America's law, and it's not backwards. It's just that they've. There's there a such thing as. There's a such thing as not. No, there's a such thing as having too much of anything. I think we lost our balance. Mm. And when you lose your balance, that's when you start saying okay to almost anything, and you cannot. Mm. You can't raise the children that way. You can't live that way. You have to regulate everything, and society is made that way. For example, if I don't sleep so many hours a day. Something's going to happen to my body. Mm. If I don't eat a certain amount, and if I don't balance it properly, my body's not going to function right. But listen, but that's there the are same bodies that work different. Well, I agree, I agree with you. And you have to allow this difference. I know, I know, but there is. You cannot rule I that everybody must eat that. So I, no, you know, no, I have, a, no, I know, I because agree. my daughter, she said, Mom, I can't eat in the morning, but at 10 a.m. I, I want to eat. And I was forcing her to eat a big breakfast because, because my mom trained. said, that's the way you were trained. So uh, this is feminist, is to go against the rules that have been written for someone else. That is not you. I agree. Okay, so I that's agree. the patriarchy. But don't you think that would not only be feminism, that would be humanism. <laughs> Absolutely. That's humanism. Because human beings have been but cattle. Absolutely. We've that's been cattle. We've yeah. been set up in a way that works for the few. They don't have the rules. They, en they enforce the rules. Exactly. That's why we have police forces. That's why we have that's armies. That's That's what th That's what we do. And it doesn't matter what we title it. Yeah. We've always made the stronger, have yeah. tried to keep their strength by yeah. making those. Yeah. Yeah, humanity, humanity, it's why, why people are so against feminists sometimes, especially male and uh, even some women, because they think that it's something excessive that is not fit in the society, but that you say, those are simple rules for each human being. This is why I advocate that more women could really become effective in the society, because we are bringing some positive changes that are, be that are beneficial for every man. 
And this is what I experienced in my company, my little way, I, what I, I brought with this loveting idea, so making things in a different way, thinking differently, doing a different market, because of course that's one example, but I did things like creating, uh, helping local craftsmen uh, of all Japan and, and creating little objects for, for our brands, for Fiat. We, we did so many, so many things that were um, uh, cross-culture, but in a way that brings uh, positivity. That's right. And you know, the most, I mean, one of the things that I, I think most successful are two, two things. One, when the CFO, an Italian guy that was very much, what? Lesbian guy, no, this type, he came to the Pride. He took a picture with our people in the, in the pr gay Pride in Japan. And the other thing was the sales director of Fiat, uh, of group, uh, my colleague, you know, of sales and marketing, uh, usually we fight, but I managed to really to take also him from the side of this loveting when he did a presentation with a slide mm -hmm. in which he said love to his dealers, which I was doing, you know, normally. I was doing this crazy thing and everybody was <laughs> laughing. But then this was the most you know rewarding moment do you ever come back mm. home or to your quiet place and go huh you just drained because of yeah, you yeah lost i was telling energy? you what happened you were talking <laughs> and mentioning my week okay so i we we started yes. saying that uh, okay. in the COVID, i understood how much i was losing about you know these feelings of being in your in your room with your cat with your plants taking care actively about that and my garden i mean garden was a, is a balcony but become just so beautiful you know the During response COVID, for those three years yeah the response of from the nature of being loved it's so immediate and the, my cat you know she became even more affectionate and 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 you know so I started to change a lot my routine. You know, of course, during the COVID, you still we are having these meetings, meetings, meetings. But I started to cook my meal again, my lunch, you know, and to f find again the the pleasure of cooking for friends, even during the weeks, not just that Sunday that you have time and then you can cook and you do it every month or two months or three months because you don't have time. No, cooking. Uh, almost every day for people come and let's have a dinner and and all this um, this change of life really inspired me to to leave uh, the corporate world because that so was you left the right starting. After, right after COVID yes, you left? Yes, 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 right after. It's last year I was, it was my first year of really true freedom because 22 I st still they asked me to stay as a consultant so I was bridging with uh, the other marketing director but then from last year I started this uh, new how do you say this new era of mine that I'm sure you resonate with it I call it harvesting okay. it's uh, the moment in which you you work hard all your life you, you you planted many seeds you know like we do we plant seeds some uh, goes well some don't grow <laughs> but you know this is uh, our practice and uh, and then you arrive in my age I, I wanted to celebrate my 60s out of the company you know and this is what I did actually and uh, and then I started a new moment of saying okay so now I will take whatever is coming that I like and it's uh, a gift from all a gift or a results of all my hard work and this is the harvesting moment, and that I'm harvesting. Beautiful. <laughs> I like that. And I'm so telling to everybody, I so like I'm that. spreading I like this that. philosophy like of that. harvesting, because at some point, you have to to see. Okay, so what now life, what 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 will happen? And this is so refreshing because you start anew, and you have also this moment of a little bit of anxiety. You say, okay, so now how? where the money will come from you know because it's not that you as you say we still in this longevity longevity society yeah that's why you have to prevent to you have to work in a way to live your previous years in order to be uh, healthy healthy and you know and strong f for the years to come so this is what uh, my philosophy is to eat well to to 
think positive, to have good friends, um, mm, good yeah, people, yeah. Uh, to have good conversation, to keep you open to, to different things, uh, never close your mind, and doing yoga, this is also you do my thing. When did you start? I started many years ago, and then I stopped, but uh, during my liberation years, I managed to become also an instructor. So <laughs> I did uh, wait, wait, these two hundred hours. Did you you uh, said your new, your new liberation years. weren't they just <laughs> well recent? Liberation. weren't they recent? Yeah, I, last year. I, I from last year I'm totally on my own. But in and that's when you started. Twenty twenty-two. I started because and that's I had when you more got time. And you got your certificate then? Uh, yes, it took uh, one year. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it's uh, it's what about uh, but, but arts? I what didn't about start. I, I did yoga for many many years. Yes, okay. It's just I just took the certificate. It was was just a kind of challenge. But I still studying. I I don't teach to. Well, I think that, 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 that <laughs> yoga is like the martial arts. You never finish. Yeah, it's something you continually yeah, do because yeah. it's a way of life. Yeah, unfortunately, I left kendo. I have uh, I'm. I'm Nidan uh, in Kendo. When did you stop? I Kendo. started in Japan when I was a student. I know, but here. when did you stop? I stop. I stop when I got pregnant. So, um, and then I, I restarted again occasionally. When did you get. W okay, wait, wait. So you have one daughter? Yeah. How she's old is your daughter? 25. 25? Yeah. So, were you married while you were in Japan? No, I married in, uh, in Italy. In Italy? Yeah. And you were married for how long? For you know, all in all, ten years. Ten years. Mm. So your daughter speaks Italian and what else? And English. She's and British. English. She's half British. And she's living here in Japan. No, she didn't want to live here. Even if she loves Japan, she she felt a bit uh, this country not not yet open to really different people. She's she's a black girl. Okay, she can uh, be totally black, but she's of color. Yeah, everybody everybody really wanted to touch her hair and. She had this always <laughs> her beautiful Afro hair, always combed in a ponytail, and I was seeing this little girl that you know she was so s always very happy and very vocal with her hair, uh, doing this, and I, I thought that mm -hmm. she she might have gone through a moment in which you know being in a country in which everybody has straight hair, she was she was really. And that shocked because everybody wanted to how touch her how hair. We, how old was she when she came here? Uh, six, six year, six mm. year old. Mm. Okay, so you, your husband didn't come with you. No, no, no. We we separated just the year I, I then decided to come here. Okay, and you told me he's from where? He's British, but he's British. Um, from Barbados. Barbados, yeah, originally. originally. Yeah. Oh, so then, he, so then you came over here with your daughter, who's six years old, and my and cats. In your cuts, and you raised her by yourself. Oh well, yeah, like many many women do. So how <laughs> many? Nothing <laughs> special. <laughs> That's true. How many years? How many years did she live here? Did she? Uh, live she here? she did all her schools here, so she she graduated from high school. Yeah. And yeah, she was uh, eighteen, and then she went to London to to study, and she's there now. She well, she speaks Japanese that. then, doesn't she? Yeah, she speaks. So she speaks Japanese. three languages. You said mm. just Italian and English. No, 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 Italian, English, and Japanese. And Japanese. So she's fluent in all three. And she's decided to go back to Italy? Yeah. No, to London. To London. She she's in London. enjoying it there? She loves there, yeah. But she comes to visit you. Yeah, often, right? we, I go there and she comes here, of course. She comes to see her cat. Okay. <laughs> Mostly. Oh, that's her cat. <laughs> no, I mean, it's <coughs> a, What kind of, what kind of work is she doing? What her she, sister. What, what field did she go into? Oh, it's interesting because mm. she, she, she's a, an athlete. Uh, yeah, she was winning all the competitions. <laughs> she was the leader of our soccer team, mm. uh, play, uh, basketball team, Japan. and yes. uh, running, and uh, and she she actually she's chosen her university because she had so many soccer fields and she wanted to play soccer, and then you know, talking about diversity and racism and, and so on, she was um, one. Uh, she's she was actually one of the few black girls and people in the university in London. I mean, imagine the melting pot of the wait, society. Wait, wait. Yeah, She's yeah. one of the few in the in yeah, university in, in London? Yeah, university, yeah. It's uh, <coughs> strangely enough, you, you must say that, you know, London is such a mixed mm -hmm. country, which is, but, but in some, some area, totally white. Economically is what they did. Very white and very, unfortunately, quite racist, I must say. Anyway, so basically, uh, she started to play soccer 
actually she was really fantastic I, I saw her not so many times I'm a bad mother for this so <laughs> but I when I want to see her playing and she was playing the ball was moving around her body not not even the food so she was really good anyway just to make it short the girls or white girls of the, the, the team they start excluding her because she didn't go out drinking with them every other night and uh, she couldn't drink I mean she, she was she wasn't interested yeah. uh, she couldn't really she yeah. she has couldn't she metabolize it well okay doesn't now she's starting to drink a bit because you know the society there is really alcoholic oh my god <laughs> anyway you don't drink so I, I drink a glass of wine a, bit, but uh, you don't a glass of sake um, but not yeah, uh, not yeah, every yeah. day right but, uh, when yeah. I'm enjoying with them uh, course with many events I have to attend sometimes you, you it happens that you drink even two three glasses uh, I, I try not to so anyway so but she I enjoy I enjoy drinking right, right. Yeah. so how is she doing now so she she started these things because she wanted to play soccer she, she studied sports science and she graduated in sports science but she also took a business uh, management course on the same time and at the end, uh, she ended up in doing her own uh, type of sports. She left the soccer team because they punished her for that. So imagine being a young uh, kid and, and then COVID happened. She spent all her university time in COVID in half lockdown in the UK. So she had a very tough, uh, tough time. So how is she, she came out from that starting like her mother loving plants so mm -hmm. she found these things during the this covid she started to growing her own things plants in this little apartment and then you know uh, the english house is a, always a backyard and a nice place and then she she now she's working in um, plants uh, um, consulting and doing uh, lots of, of things but really also physically taking care of uh, plants in uh, she in Richmond oh, that is so, so you know things are getting you never plan you can never plan what you will become that's you know true. That's true. but she started as a, a soccer player uh, enthusiast you should say something to her right there to my daughter, but yeah, she will yeah. never watch this. She's, She's going to watch it. No, You'll find no, out. she doesn't. She doesn't. She'll watch it. She'll see what <laughs> you're She doesn't. She You'll be surprised. She's one of, of those young people that now they are discon trying to disconnect from the social media as much as they can. They don't post. That's, this is, she'll watch <coughs> your podcast. I'm sure she will. She wants to know what mommy's doing. Mm -hmm. Because all of us do. All of us <laughs> always... I, I like but to you know, we are so much in, in connection. We are so connected. Oh, that she beautiful. doesn't need to listen. We, we have cut the bullshit, me and my daughter. That's beautiful. A lot. You used to you have know? some bullshit? You guys used to uh, have bullshit? Like every, what? every parent said <laughs> bullshit. I was, uh, I was always uh, pushing her, as I say, to eat in oh, an oh, order. I, see, I, see, I, see. I mean, uh, southern mothers I especially, they have this bullshit, you know, to, well, you to follow. You're taught that. And you're then taught to, that. to be, to cover yourself because it's too cold. We believe in this <laughs> cold uh, stroke that <laughs> are coming from you. <laughs> we, uh, southern Italian, here I am. I didn't lose all my stereotypes. Maybe stereotype us, yes. So uh, this type of things and also, you know, probably you have always uh, some, uh, you push some expectation on your kids, don't you? I you have you expectations. Do, but I tried to be, I tried to be more... Um, and then I, I start cutting. This is bullshit, really. Okay. This is technical. But the you most still have. You want them to be healthy. You no, do, but that's, you our, do that's our normal expectation. I know, but you want them to be I'm successful in life, too. Yes, so they but can the success, what they want. Uh, the, the type of success we are looking at is, is what we learned that is to be successful, you know? And, and now it's different. I mean, young people, the uh, new generation, they see uh, success or they see happiness or they see, you know, um, fulfillment in a different way than we did. So, you know, mm, it's not nothing really worse than putting your beliefs about success on the back of your kids, you know? So I stopped that. Absolutely, so and this is also a big learning from period like uh, COVID, because I'm also very passionate about mental health, and I'm uh, on the board of director of Tell, the 
the yes. only uh, English lifeline active since 50 years here right. in Japan, as you know. I had the, I had the chairman on. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, basically, uh, tell uh, it was also a great experience because I started well before COVID to to help and to support, but during uh, COVID and also managing uh, the the. The, the anxiety of, of even my daughter in uh, during this period it was really uh, uh, important to have this background of, of knowledge on how to listen to to people's problem and uh, and this changed me a lot also in uh, in my relationship with my daughter in uh, in not uh, putting on her my you know the things that I believe and, and the beautiful things you know what is it is that then you see in your daughter that she will pick up only the beautiful things of yourself, which is great. I mean, if you can succeed <coughs> in having someone from your sharing your DNA that will pick up something good of you and rejecting the the, the, the worst, the, the human it's part, it's great. Yeah. Um, but we, well, it's all human, but <coughs> the I negative know you part, you know, the bullshit yeah. part and the, the ego part and the uh, judgmental um, myself, you know, if uh, she is, she managed to become really such a better person than, than me. So that's that's what make us uh, evolutionary, I think. This, yes, so, you, so if true. you make a, a, a child, you have just to hope that she will be better than you, but not <laughs> better than you in terms of money, success, and uh, uh, this type of material things, but better than you in a spiritual way. Right. Tiziana, yeah, good. if you were to go back in time and meet yeah. the younger, Tiziana, yeah, and give her advice. Yeah, how old would she be, and what advice would you give her? Well, I meet her constantly. I tell you because I'm in constant touch with my inner child. Like we, you know, it's a very popular thing now. But I started to to have a conversation with my inner child since a long time, long time. So she's very present in uh, in my daily life, and I know the things that I. I changed uh, from how she was when she was young. Uh, something changed in a bed, uh, something maybe became worse. But one thing is true. I kept this, um, how do you say, this pure sense of, of being a believer, you know? Uh, this is something that I was when I was little. I was a little girl. Uh, always very fighting and very I was sometimes a bit aggressive and <laughs> I must say a bit I wanted to uh, to dominate the situation I had a strong leadership let's say which still I, I have somehow but I trying to start <laughs> to change it in a more positive inclusive type of leadership so I, 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 I can see how that girl changed so I have no particular advice from her actually I always tend to keep an advice from her to my old self from her to tell me hey look this is we were not like this before just try to reconnect to what you really liked to what really made you cry and made you feel better and this at the end of the day are the connection with nature I'm still the same. And so what I will say to Harry, what she said to me, stay connected with nature, with, with the beauty of this planet, try to preserve it, try to do something, even little things. You know, I mentioned plastic bottles. I start, stopped using them since 30 years. I stopped using, um, eating meat because of the intensive farming or because of the cruelty of animals 40 years ago. I mean. And of course, sometimes I do, eh? because uh, I, I also work for food now. And I have mm. to, to preserve all the rich diversity. So people that likes to eat meat, I, I respect them. Eh? But don't eat meat from coming from intensive farming. Try to avoid all this industrialized food. So reconnect to the real, real things that are just the natural thing. And if you reconnect to them, that's the lesson for our humanity. You, be, you understand that we are all connected, all of us. So you cannot do harm to any other person. And uh, so what's happening now in the world, really it's, uh, it's a proof of the lack of connectivity with, the, with all this planet and universe mm -hmm. because we are all connected so how can you do something in the name of 
fake religion of beliefs that are not humans how can you kill people how can you dispossess how can you do genocide how can you be on top of government and act as a terrorist you know we see many of these uh, all these things happening now and i totally think that is because we are we have been disconnected from the nature and from our natural selves and i think you should end with the love and that's love Lovation. love is not Lovation, how did you pronounce hmm? it loveting loveting is uh, is the marketing of love you know is love loveting but uh, actually is the power of the universal power of love when i say love not uh, heart and blah blah blah, blah love, love love no love is a strong feeling is is strong and also is passionate is something that moves your energy it's uh, a big energy that gives you strength to to go to move forward i love it thank you so much yeah Tixiana. thanks to you sorry i Tixiana. took so much time you did not this is your podcast <laughs> thank you this is your podcast i want to thank all of you for watching or listening to this podcast to never forget it's all on loan so continue to reach for the stars because you are too blessed to be stressed mm -hmm.